So we actually have a few more questions that we need to answer for this to make perfect sense. Because you might have an objection, which is, if we keep pushing glucose into the cell, the glucose concentration in here is gonna get really high, and that's gonna make it harder to get more glucose in. But luckily, we have glucose channels on this side, on the basal lateral side, that let glucose diffuse out. Its concentration is quite high in the cell because of the transporter, and so it diffuses out. You have something very similar for amino acids, and even something similar for potassium. Because if this pump keeps running all day long, it's just gonna put a ton of potassium into the cell. So potassium kind of circulates, it comes in with the pump, then goes back out again, and it gets pumped right back in. So that explains how all of these things, sodium, glucose, amino acids, are crossing both membranes. But what happens to them once they get here? Do they just build up in the renal interstitium here? Well, that wouldn't be very helpful. We really want to get them back into systemic circulation. And so what they actually do is they go into the peritubular capillaries. The pressure in these peritubular capillaries is pretty low, which makes it easier for fluid to get in. And then there's also proteins here in the peritubular capillaries that exert an oncotic pressure, which helps drag all of this fluid and sodium and glucose and amino acids into the bloodstream. Now one last thing, sometimes people want you to know the names of some of these transporters and two in particular. One is this sodium glucose co-transporter. It's called SGLT, that's for sodium glucose transporter. And there are actually two and they're both here in the kidney, one and two. So SGLT1 and SGLT2. And then the thing that lets glucose diffuse out of the basal lateral side is called a glucose transporter. So it's GLUT, and it happens to be number two. So glucose transporter number two.